Hi, I'm Liz Spangler, a consulting architect with Red Hat North America Financial Services. My background is in cloud native application development and event driven microservices. And I'm Grant Costa, a Red Hat consultant in middleware and OpenShift. Today we'll be talking about Kafka and OpenShift and how we can get our application highly available and ready for production. You see here our logical application design and it has an upstream service connected to a REST service, connecting to a processing app and an underlying database. What we want to do here is make this highly available and ready for production. Right, and what that means is we want to avoid any interruptions uh, in service uh, at this REST layer to the upstream. Right, and so I see that here we scaled out this REST service into different containers and containers on OpenShift are very lightweight, so there's no need for new VMs or any hardware um, extra. So that way, we can deploy more containers as needed and keep up with the incoming traffic um, that we might have. And in that case, if one REST service were to go down, we would still have more able to take service calls. Absolutely right. Uh, and OpenShift has a built-in load balancer. So all these requests that are coming in from the upstream uh, to our REST layer, uh, OpenShift will spread that, those out against uh, our running uh, instances of the service. Right, and so here we also have them deployed on nodes. So those pods use the nodes as a compute platform. And the nodes are deployed on different availability regions and different hardware. That way, if one of those regions or hardware were to go down, we would have other nodes that are hopefully still available with containers on them in that the upstream could then access and we wouldn't experience any downtime. Yep, so we've got our services, which are containerized, and the containers run on pods. The pods themselves live on nodes. Uh, we can set up affinity rules in OpenShift, and that tells OpenShift and the OpenShift scheduler to spread out these pods uh, across different nodes in different availability zones. Uh, so then we can achieve resilience at the rack level, even the data center level. Yeah, so we've talked about how to avoid downtime in the REST service layer. What happens if a processing app or database were to go down here? That's a really good point. So as you can see here in our logical application view, uh, the REST service is calling synchronously to the processing app, which itself is calling synchronously to the database. So uh, we do have the risk here. If there is any interruption at this underlying layer, uh, then we may ultimately end up with an interruption for the upstream. Right, OK. So by adding this messaging layer here, we can then connect all the REST services up to it and have them put messages onto this topic. As they're putting messages onto this topic, it will then send those messages to the processing apps downstream. If those processing apps are down, we're able to have the REST service return back to the upstream and then the pro the, when the processing apps do come back up, they can use those messages that are stored on the topic and continue processing. Absolutely. So as long as the processing app can operate independently or synchronously from our REST services, uh, this will work. And we're also making the assumption here that our topic is itself deployed on a highly available Kafka cluster. Right. So. What happens if in the upstream application there were a traffic spike, let's say, threatening to inundate the rest of the services? That's another good point. Uh, OpenShift has uh, another feature built in uh, called the horizontal pod autoscaler, uh, which you're familiar with. Yeah, so the horizontal pod autoscaler would be really good here because it can monitor the CPU utilization of the containers and then know whether or not we need to scale the containers up or down. And it can also do that automatically for us. Right, and we just have to make sure that we have metrics set up in our OpenShift cluster. Uh, but if we do, and we use the horizontal pod autoscaler, then we can scale up to meet traffic demands and scale back down to conserve resources. OK, so I know that we've talked about scaling the REST service. I see that the processing apps are also scaled. So is that in order to keep up with the incoming traffic from the REST service? Right, so as we just discussed, uh, we likely won't have an interruption uh, for the upstream uh, if we have a traffic spike and this REST service 
uh, scales to meet it. Uh, but we might end up with a slowdown. Uh, we might end up with a bottleneck if we have messages piling up on this topic. Yeah, so one thing that we do need to consider, though, is the partitions on the topic. Um, at any given time, there shouldn't be more consumers than there are partitions. Because if there are more consumers, they will be deployed and unable to read from any of those given partitions and therefore be a waste because they aren't taking any service calls. Absolutely. So it's totally fine to have fewer instances of this processing app uh, that belong to a single Kafka consumer group uh, that are reading from this topic. Uh, but we just don't want more. Otherwise, as you mentioned, uh, we'll have uh, processing apps that uh, aren't processing. Uh, so now, at this point, uh, we've talked about high availability uh, in our application. We've talked about a number of different scenarios. We've talked about uh, high availability at different layers of the application. What can people do to learn more? Yeah, to learn more, you can contact your Red Hat account manager or go to redhat.com services.